to today's live chat. I'm so glad you're joining me either live right now on Thursday at 3 p.m. or maybe watching it during the replay. Either way, super glad you're here. Now, I may have went and switched up the topic just a bit. I had said last week I was gonna talk about picking designs for pictorial blocks, but this time I decided to change it up and I'm gonna talk about quilting Tula Pink's butterfly quilt. So I've actually done three of these for her and I'm gonna show you a little bit of my process. You'll get to see some in-progress pictures and I'll talk a little bit about why I picked the designs I picked. Now, as I'm showing pictures, please, please, please text in or um, type in your questions. Jessica's actually here scrolling through there. She's going to write them down for me. That way I can address them at the end if you'd like. Um, I'm looking forward to today's live chat. So Tula announced the, or showed off her butterfly quilt on her Instagram account yesterday or Tuesday. So check that out if you want to see the quilt that I'm going to be talking about. And she kind of talks about her design process, the piecing of it. And that stunning quilt features her True Colors fabric collection. Just, is there anybody that does color like Tula? There just really isn't. But this beautiful fat quarter bundle is this week's daily or this week's deal for the live chat. So you can actually get 20% off of the bundle by using the promo code butterfly. And the link to purchase that is in the description box below. So definitely check that out if you're interested in this gorgeous fabric. Uh, that promo code is only good while supplies last or until next week's live chat. So if you're watching this in the future, Sorry, but if you're watching right now, then you can definitely take advantage of it. So first, let me get my pictures up and let's talk about um, the Tula quilt. So here's a little up close picture of her True Colors fabric. Just such gorgeous saturated colors. And this is the collection that she actually made her most recent butterfly quilt out of. Now the bundle itself isn't for the quilt. She said in her Instagram account that her butterfly pattern will be available soon, just not right yet. Um, but I decided to pick it as today's daily deal because, well, I love Tula and I love her fabric and I wanted to share that with you guys. All right, so if you don't know who Tula Pink is, I'm sure you do, right? Tula Pink, fabric designer extraordinaire. Um, we've been quilting or working together for 12 years. I was pregnant with my youngest daughter when we met. So she, my youngest daughter is now 12 and that's how I keep track of how long we've been together. Um, we, I've had the privilege of quilting a lot of different quilts for her. We've done a book together. We've traveled together. We've stayed in the same hotel room. We taught at the same shows. And as a bonus, she only lives about an hour north of me. And so we get together semi-regularly to either trade off quilts or get coffee or, or hang out. So definitely love working with her. And all the quilts that she gives me are amazing. And she really lets me have a great time with it. And sometimes she gives me a quilt more than once. So this is the very, very first butterfly quilt I quilted for her. So this was actually, I went back and looked up the dates because I'm like, gosh, how long ago has that been? This quilt is actually from 2013, so eight years ago. It's crazy to think how much stuff has changed in eight years. Um, th this was the first one that I quilted for her. Um, it was really a lot of fun, a little daunting. I mean, I'd never quilted a large butterfly quilt before. And the, it's made up of all these intricate blocks, really cool layout. And I really wanted the quilting to highlight all of the most important things about it, but not overwhelm it. So when I'm looking at a quilt like this, especially for Tula, I always know I can go bigger and a little bolder than I might for other quilts or other customers at that time. And what I wanted to do is use the inspiration of the butterfly and add some details. Now it's fun because I actually use this quilt as an example in my help, how do I quilt it, like lecture in class. And the thing is, your, the details that you're adding with the quilting don't have to be literal. Like I don't have to quilt little beady eyes and you know actual antenna and little feathers on the butterfly, but I can use designs to kind of hint at that inspiration. And so really after looking at it for, for a second, I knew that I wanted to quilt these feathers that kind of extend out and kind of replicate or become like the antenna. And this was, um, my main thought, and I thought I'll just kind of have them branching out, and you can see them coming out of the top of that. And then I'll have other feathers wrap around and kind of surround the butterfly with that design. Tula loves feathers, I love feathers. Um, I love quilting them really big and in different ways, so this was an easy, easy guess for me. Um, I decided to have the feathers look like they were crossing over each other. So the antenna kind of looked like they're going behind, and then these other feathers go up and off the quilt and then wrap around. I think it was, I think it worked. I mean, I like how it turned out, but the one thing, the one regret I had about this is I just felt like they didn't look enough like antenna. Like it wasn't quite, I like didn't quite hit the mark in my opinion. Now, again, guys, it's not like you need to be hard on yourself. I'm just saying every time I finish a quilt, I like to think what could I do different? 
And what other details can I add? Then we have all this beautiful piecing. And really, I mean, she's promoting a lot of different things with this quilt. She's promoting her fabric collection. She's promoting the pattern. And so when I'm dealing with some favorite prints or when fabrics are important or one of my favorite parts of the quilt, I'm gonna use a lot of echoing and a lot of designs that are more basic in how they go together. Now, it's all relative, right? You might look at some of these designs and think, well, that's not basic, but it's basic for me. So lots of just X's, continuous curve, echoing the sides of the block, um, just kind of making them all blend into each other since they're using similar designs, but quilting them all separately so that they stand out enough. I mean, I, I want to be the kind of person that would actually piece this quilt. Let's just say that. I, I want to be a person that could start this butterfly quilt, piece it and quilt it and finish it. But I know that's not me. I know myself. I would totally get distracted by the next new project. So one of the things I love about machine quilting for Tula is I get to quilt quilts that I might not ever make myself. So I still get to play a little part in it. So I wanted those individual pieces to show up. And by quilting them differently, each block, differently. Um, I could really show off her amazing piecing. I mean, she is a spectacular piecer. D attention to detail, precision, it's just perfect. It's, it's a dream, um, really, to quilt them. And here's a little closer up of some of the designs in there. So if I'm using the same shapes, echo lines or straight lines, continuous curve, with a couple little curvier designs thrown in, repeating them in the different blocks in different ways, again, just helps give it a little bit of cohesion. But let's be honest, it really helps make picking designs easier. It's kind of like, okay, can I do a continuous curve here? Can I do dot to dot? So if you're ever quilting sampler quilts, this is a great option. Find those designs that can work in a number of blocks and a number of different sizes, and it will really make your life a lot easier. I'm already doing something intricate and crazy on the outside. I don't need to do anything really, really crazy in the fabric, especially when I want the fabric to show up. Now this is just an up-close picture of the feathers. Um, I love quilting things to death. Quilt it till it has too much and then add some more is something I always say. And plus I know that Tula appreciates, you know, the dense quilting to really make those feathers pop. So that contrast in density is what really helps those, fe those feathers stand out. Um, but let's be honest, it takes a long time to quilt those little tiny fillers. So the bigger my feather, the more, more it curls around is the least less I have to quilt that filler. So you might look at the feathers and think, oh my gosh, that must have took forever. No, that was the quick part compared to the filler. But by quilting them bigger and so they wrapped around, it really did help save a little bit of time. Again, a couple more pictures of the different designs. I disregarded the, the border on top. It was interesting to watch her chat about the quilt pattern because we don't really compare notes on inspirations or anything like that. But she had mentioned she picks the border so that it kind of blends in but isn't the same. And I think that's awesome. And I just kind of quilted it as though it were background. I knew that if I had treated that border separate, I wouldn't have room for the feathers to run around like I want them to. And it's busier fabric, you wouldn't see the quilting anyway. So I wanted to just kind of disregard that. And then again, in the bottom corner, you can bottom right corner, you can see echoing. Echoing is a great, great way to show off the piecing of your block without overwhelming the fabrics. And so where it was more solid, I try to just stick with the basic straight lines and where the fabric was a little bit more bold print, I felt like I can do a little bit more, maybe continuous curve or curvier stuff. So that was the first one. I was happy with how it turned out besides the antenna. Overall though, I, I was happy with it. Um, she was happy with it, so that was great. And then she brought me a second one and that was in April, 2015. So this has been, you know, six years ago, and it was for market at that time in, pre in showing off her next fabric collection. So I don't ever like to quilt the same quilt pattern the same way twice, just because I'm easily bored and I like to change it up and there's always room for improvement. And so this one I decided to go about a little differently. The first thing I wanna point out is this is hanging in her booth. Um, the top border fabric is, is a little bit more contrasting with the background fabric. So it doesn't blend into each other as much. And I thought, you know, I've already done the feathers coming out of the antenna. What can I do a little bit different to still give it that cool look? And what I decided to do is around the piecing, add some nice curvy pointy brackets and then echoing. And then instead of the feather, I went with a swirl chain that kind of worked its way around. Um, and then of course, it's hard to see in the picture, but in that top print, I just quilted a swirl chain across and added some filler, just a pretty elegant texture since I knew you probably wouldn't be able to see it. 
So different different design ideas. I wanted the quilting to maybe add a curvier, softer touch to the edge of the butterfly. So it's obviously a butterfly. You can see that, but it's a little bit jagged on the edges. And I thought maybe the quilting could just kind of smooth that out. And then I can use some different fillers on each side to kind of make that curviness show off. And so here, I don't, this, you know, obviously was done so many years ago. I just dug through my old pictures and I have some, some photos that are not fantastic, but kind of gives you an idea of, of what I was doing at the time. So I quilt all her quilts on my long arm. I do love quilting on a sewing machine, but her quilts are big. And I also use two layers of batting in her quilts. That really gives it some definition and helps it hang beautifully straight and really shows it off. It makes it heavy. So don't do that on a bed quilt if you want to be able to get out from under the quilt. But so I didn't, I don't want to wrestle that through my sewing machine. So all her quilts I do on my long arm. But one thing is there's so much space between that border and my butterfly that I need to quilt my design kind of at a, an angle. And those diagonal designs or anything that moves on the diagonal is a little bit tricky for long arm quilting. If, if you don't have a long arm, it's because we're working in a horizontal plane. So I only have, you know, I have the Avante, the Handy Quilter Avante, it's 18 inches. So I have about 15 inches of workable space. And as soon as I hit the bottom of that, I'd have to advance and come back and forth. So what you're seeing here is me quilting the blocks, working my way down, but in that big background area, I, at that point, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do yet. I kind of had an idea, but it wasn't fully formed out and I didn't want to get started. So what I, what you see there are pins to stabilize that unquilted area. So those are just the corsage pins that I actually use to pin my quilt to the frame. So when long arm quilting, you can't roll up a big section of unquilted area and come back to it because you'll shift the fabric, shift the fabric and maybe get tucks on the back. So stabilizing it allows it to stay in place until I'm ready to quilt it. So those pins are going parallel to the bar so I can just roll them up with a quilt and then come back and handle it later. So that's what you're seeing right there. Plus, I love Tula and I will do anything for her, including change thread colors. So you can see that light, you know, cream background and then those bold pink fabrics, then I'm change thread in between those. So that also, I'm stabilizing it while I'm working my way down. So you can kind of see that's in progress. And then took uh, some pictures as I was filling in that space. So here's a little bit up close of that swirl chain with a little bit of the feather look. I, I really loved the hint of the feather, but I wanted to try something different. And then what you're seeing to the left side is a wavy, wavy border design that I kind of shrunk down and used as a filler. And it took a lot longer than I thought, but it was really neat texture. And I just thought it was a different look than anything I had done before. And so I thought, well, let's go ahead and give this a shot. And even though it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, it definitely didn't take as long as quilting pebbles in that same spot. So here you can see I'm kind of filling in my area. I'm starting with my curvier brackets. I'm echoing them because I want them to show up or separate, but I only echoed them a couple times. I didn't want it to be so like in your face. And then I started filling in one side with that wavy, wavy design. Now, what you can see is on the top left, there's that blue marking pin. That's what I like to use to mark out my registration lines. So this is a question I'm asked a lot. Do I mark out my designs um, before I start quilting? Not always, not really. I don't, I don't mark out the whole design in general, but I will mark reference lines. And we'll see that again here in a second. Reference lines that help me see or keep track, make sure the design goes where it needs to go. This is especially helpful if I'm advancing the quilt back and forth so that I can make sure it's still following that trajectory. So I have my brackets, I've quilted my, my swirl chain and then it was time to fill it in and I couldn't decide what to do. I remember thinking like, oh, I don't wanna do pebbles. I wanna do something different. And I ended up going with back and forth lines, which really smashes down an area and really helps the other part stand up. So it's still very dense, but it's more linear. And the fact that it contrasts or it has a different direction than the other two just really helps separate it a little bit more. I wanted that filler in between the two to be more contrasting than that wavy design. If that makes sense. I didn't want um, like the swirl chain and those brackets to show up. I wanted it to be this texture, swirl chain and wavy lines, bracket and wavy lines, and then this dense back and forth line in between. Now, I should probably pause. I tend to overthink quilting designs. I, I love it. I love to obsess about it. I like when I'm quilting, I like to think about it. It doesn't have to be this difficult. You definitely don't have to go as crazy with it as I do. 
And then I'm just another in progress picture. Again, these aren't the best pictures, but the phone I was using to take them, you know, six years ago would not be as good as the one I have now. On a long arm, when I'm doing that back and forth line, I'm actually using my ruler to help keep the momentum contained. And I wish I had a picture of this. I might have to make a little video, but as I'm working my way down, I'm using that ruler as a stopping point so that I can come down and make my sections or make my straight lines. So it's not so much, that ruler isn't so much to help make the line straight. I'm not too worried about that. It's to help control that turn because as you're working on a long arm, sometimes that momentum just kind of really goes and then you end up with a bigger design than you want. Now on a sewing machine, I don't have that problem because the quilt doesn't ever just run away from me. It's not like I'm like, oh my gosh, come back here, quilt, what are you doing? So that's just a little bit different of how I'd handle that on a long arm. All right, can you believe though, I didn't take a single full quilt shot of the most recent one? I, I don't know what I was thinking. I Well, I'd had it forever and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it done. I mean, it took a long time. So I was just so excited to finish it up. So this is just a screen grab from her video or her um, Tuesday talk. Uh, I try to get the most flattering one I can. It's not easy to get a good still picture from a video, but you can see those true color fabrics and same pattern, just a little bit different placement. So I'm gonna talk about how I took what I've learned from the previous two and how I applied it to this quilt. Um, first of all, I did go back to the feathers. I loved the feathers. I, I just think they create a beautiful effect as they wrap around, but I wanted them to look more antenna-like. And so this was a part that took me a while because I'm like, how do you make a feather look like an antenna? And I decided finally, instead of adding those petals around all of it, I would just put them on the end so we have that kind of antenna coming up, but then it turns into the feather. And I'm so glad I did it that way. I love this so much more than the first one. Um, and I think it, it's a good, a good result. And I marked reference lines, but when it came to it, I just freehanded those, those curves. And if you look at them, they're not perfectly um, exactly the same, but they are symmetrical and that's the most important thing. So when I'm marking out my motifs, I'm focused more on keeping it symmetrical than perfect. So if I have one that curls this way, I want one that curls that way. If I have one that curls this way and that way. Now, I don't want you to point out your mistakes when you show off quilts um, to your friends and family, but I'm just showing you kind of um, my mistakes just so you can see that it's not all perfect, it's just all finished. <laughs> so I decided to go a little bit different with the feather as well. Since I've already done the, the regular feather, I decided to try one that kind of curls off of each other. Um, it's a little bit more elegant, has a little bit more movement, and it takes a little bit more time. Um, and so eventually I was like, oh, maybe I should have not bit off quite so much, but I think the work was well worth the effort. So that's kind of the reason I picked that feather, and we can see a little bit more up, up, up close that antenna or that spine without the feathers all on it. Now, I use the pebbles to fill in around it. I know before I was like, oh, pebbles take a long time, but I'm already doing a feather that takes forever. Why not add some pebbles? But I was trying to somewhat save a little bit of time or give it a different texture. I quilted those pebbles right up next to the feather, but as I worked my way from the feather, I started introducing the swirls, which go a little bit quicker for me. And I, I do love how that, that pebble really pops that feather out, but then it kind of fades into the swirl. And it's not as hard as it might sound. I mean, basically when I get about two inches away from the feather, I just start quilting pebbles and swirls. And when I do about two inches of that, then I go to my swirls. And the result is that kind of um, blended look. Again, this is another way I would use that marking tool just to maybe mark the sections, knowing that when I erase those lines, it's gonna look great. And so here we can see um, a little bit more back up. I gotta tell you, I took a lot of pictures of this quilt after I was um, almost done with it and in progress. I had a lot of fun with it. But let's talk a little bit about the piecing. I have some more pictures to show you here in a little bit, but I kept the piecing idea the same. When you've quilted it a couple times, you know what looks good, and I knew that quilting those echo lines would be an easy way to just really highlight the piecing, the beautiful colors, and then just those the same kind of designs. Now the way this feather goes together is instead of one long continuous spine, it's actually little kind of swoops that come off of it and then put together, it makes that, that pretty feather. Um, this is something I learned or saw Kimmy Bruner do, other long armor quilters. I just had never really tried it before, but I love that kind of wrapping effect that you get. And what I did is I did mark out some of those reference lines so that I could see where I wanted them to kind of come off. Again, because I'm trying to make it symmetrical on both sides. And as I got to the middle of the quilt or towards the bottom, those they were pretty far away from each other. So 
I wanted to make sure that they were still symmetrical. And you can see a little bit more of the pebbles kind of merging into those swirls there. And again, it's, it not only is it a little bit quicker than quilting all the pebbles, it adds more interest. If it's just pebbles everywhere, it's just you don't know where to look. And then it, it makes it go a little bit quicker and keeps me engaged, so there, there is that. And then just another pretty example. One thing I forgot to point out about the first one is instead of having the feather come up and wrap around, it actually kind of came out the center and wrapped around the top and then wrapped around the bottom. Um, and I liked how that looked, but I thought, you know what, I think it might be better or different if I quilt it so it goes up and then around. Again, I'm overthinking it, but that's, that's what I love to do. I love to, to um, overthink all of it. So as I'm filling it in, I'm quilting it, and I, I love watching the quilt come around on my long arm. I like seeing you know, the quilt come up off the floor, knowing I'm getting closer. And what's great about her pattern, this particular pattern, is I can kind of tackle the hardest part first. That antenna was the one thing that was like a little nervous about. So being able to tackle that first, get it out, and then kind of get on made it really a lot easier for me. And so again, just another, another picture. I wanted to also add more echo lines than I did before because if you look at that second quilt, I only added a couple echo lines to those brackets. They didn't stand out a whole lot, which is kind of what I was going for. But for the antenna, I wanted it to be obvious that this is what's going on here. And so adding a few extra of those lines really helped that come out. And the trick to echoing is, isn't trying to keep it perfect. It's just trying to keep the lines smooth. So even if you look and you're like, that echo line isn't perfectly echoing, it is smooth and that's the most important. I think when we have a jagged bit to it, it kind of stands out, but if it's nice and smooth, even if it veers away and comes in, then it looks good. And that's, you know, that's the most important thing. Now in the top, I quilted in that busier fabric. I just did some swirls and some loops. Um, in the busier fabric, in that background, you're not gonna really see it. And I don't wanna put, you know, real intricate quilting up here because it could distract from the main element. So the thing I would want to pass on or share is that you don't have to do difficult stuff over the whole quilt. You can pick and choose where you want to put your intricate quilting and still have a really impactful, and in some cases, even more impactful quilting example. Um, so in that fabric, I just kind of quilted some swirls and some bigger pebbles, still very similar to the filler I was using, just bigger in a little bit different ways and it just, it keeps the quilting subtle in the corners. Okay, so this is one of the feathers in progress. So I'm working my way down the quilt in chunks, right? So kind of in sections like this. That's one thing that makes this feather design so ideal. Instead of having to quilt one long spine all the way down and all the way back up, I can quilt it in sections. So that means when I'm in this part of the quilt, I can quilt this section and this section, advance, and then add on to it and the result looks like one feather, even though it's quilted in sections. Now, if you're thinking, hold on, I, I can't even you know, figure out how you quilted the feather, don't worry about that. But for those of you that have a little bit more experience quilting those feathers, this is just a real easy way to make it more efficient as you work your way down the quilt, whether you're on a sewing machine or a long arm. If I'm on a sewing machine, it's gonna be easier to work within a smaller area, and on a long arm, it's gonna be easier as I go down that vertical to be able to break it into those chunks. So here I've, I have that first little swirl kind of come out and then I'm getting ready to mark my next one so that I can add, add my feathers. And I took a video, I don't know why I took this, it's me removing the marking lines. Um, I'll just show you because it kind of gives you a good idea of what's going on. So by this point I'm finished and I need to get the markings off before Tula picks up the quilt. So I'm misting that blue marker with, with my spray bottle and that just helps get it out. Um, one of the benefits of only marking registration lines is the removing of the lines goes a lot quicker. So instead of having to remove every little bit, it's just, just a little bit of the lines. And then here's the result as it works its way down the side of the quilt. So again, even though it might look a little bit more drawn out, it's still the same kind of swoosh coming off and then adding my next. Quilting those pebbles really tight around it and those, those um, swirls as I work my way, uh, way away from it. Again, super happy with how it turned out. Um, I loved it, loved everything about it. And then at the bottom as it comes in, again, I'm trying to keep it symmetrical. It's not perfect mirror image, but I don't care about that. I'm focusing on symmetry. And I just wanted to kind of come up and end. I think last time, or on the very first quilt, I quilted them so they just kind of disappeared, which is fine. But this one, I thought I'll have them end kind of in a, in a swoosh, kind of like a, just a beautiful, I don't know, thing that wraps around. Um, and so it was, it was a lot of fun. One thing I want to point out is 
it's not obvious here, but in that center part of the butterfly where those chevrons are, I kept the quilting very simple. I did the same thing, I think on all three of them, where I just did some dot to dot lines. But this particular quilt had rainbow colors in that, that center, so I had to change threads as I went. But I didn't wanna to have to change out for each white one. So each white um, chevron is actually quilted with a thread color that's above or below it. And since it's just a straight line, it's not super obvious, but I do like how it gives that hint of color. I don't think I have a great picture of it. I guess we'll find out here soon. Um, but so sometimes I'll use contrasting thread if I'm in a tight spot or I want it to, you know, I don't want to change threads again, but keeping the quilting design simple will help keep that from overwhelming it. And this is just another close up picture of the final part of that feather. I tried to make it end in the center. It's a little off, but it, I think it turned out really well. And then just a side picture. Again, I took a lot of pictures of it. I was super happy with how it turned out. But there we go, there's that center part. So I have you know some different color threads in there, but I, I don't think it overwhelms, especially since there's so much going on. So don't be afraid of contrasting thread in little bits, especially when the design is nice and basic. If this though had been a feather or something with backtracking that I was gonna put in those chevrons, I would have definitely not used the contrasting thread. All right, let's talk about the piecing real quick and then I'll get ready to take your questions. Um, again, I did a lot of the same things that I did on the previous ones, echoing, continuous curve. The thing I did a little bit different this time is I kind of imagined or quilted the lines so that they blended into each block. And you can see this on the bottom right with those kind of quarter log cabin blocks. So it kind of blends in from one to the next. I just kind of like that little hint of a secondary pattern. Um, and again, in that solid fabric where the quilting is gonna show up a little bit more, kept it fairly you know, basic and even in the prints. And so trying not to make one individual block stand out more than any of the others, but still trying to give it the custom attention that a Tula pink butterfly quilt deserves. And you can see here just more echo. In the center, this is, I think this is my last picture, but in that center with that cross right there, this is one of my favorite things to do because it looks so elegant. Adding just echo lines inside and then putting your filler, this is just ribbon candy, just gives it a little bit more of an elegant custom look. And it doesn't take that much longer. So if you're looking at a block and you're like, I just want it, just a little, little something extra, echoing inside the piecing just helps separate it a little bit more. So definitely, definitely a lot of fun. So that's all the pictures I have um, for the for the Tula pink quilt, or the Tula butterfly quilt. I hope you have enjoyed a little bit of a peek into that. Um, do you have any questions, Jessica? Is everybody loving what we're talking about? There was a couple that came up that weren't specific to the butterfly, so I'll talk about it here in a second. Um, popular question, two stars. How long did it take you to quilt that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a question I'm asked a lot. You know, how long it takes to quilt a quilt? It depends, it depends. This quilt took probably longer than the other two combined just because I wasn't able to work on it as much as I did in the past. Um, life keeps getting in the way, running the rest of my business is kind of time consuming. So from start to finish, it took about a month and a half, but that wasn't only quilting. I will say though that when I do get to my machine, I'm quilting fast, I'm not hesitating, I'm not obsessing too much, <laughs> I'm just quilting. So. I wish I had a better answer for you that I didn't keep track. I will say though that on the very first one, the very first butterfly, which didn't take as long, I did a blog post on it that I found, like an old one that's not even public anymore. And I, I wrote that it took me 12 hours. So that's pretty quick. I, this one probably took a little bit longer than that. Sorry, I know that's not a good answer. I know, I know, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to keep track of that, especially because I'm coming in chunks. Do I always heavily quilt Tula's quilts? Yes. I think her love language is dense quilting. So if I quilt it really dense, she feels like I really love her. Um, no, we have the same aesthetic or we, the same um, likes and preferences. And so I definitely always quilt hers really heavily and do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I mean, I've quilted everything from feathers with spider webs in them to a spaceship to Gothic arches. I mean, she gives me such fun stuff. So yeah, she always gets a lot of quilting. I like to joke that, you know, when she would travel and do trunk shows, I'm like, you can probably only get two quilts in a suitcase. They're so heavy with the batting and the thread that's in it, but kind of funny. What kind of batting do I use? Do I use the same two layers of batting on Tula's quilts? Yes, I do. So I like Quilter's Dream Poly Select Batting. So Quilter's Dream is the brand. It's polyester batting and it's the Select Loft, the medium loft. 
It's not though what you would think. It's not like a puffy. It's almost, it's nice and thin. I mean, it's beautiful. It has a lovely drape. And when I started quilting for Tula, I was only quilting for customers. I didn't have the shop and the online stuff. And so I really only had room for one roll of batting and it was poly. So when I decided to try two layers, I'm just gonna use two of what I have. So, I mean, in the past I've tried, you know, um, using two different kinds and I'm sure you get different effects with that, but I know what it's gonna give me. I know that Tula loves it. So I use those two layers. It's kind of like a faux to pronto. And she talks about that in her chat um, I had forgotten the very first quilt I did for her was an actual trapunto, which took forever. This kind of gives you that same-ish effect where that wide open quilting pops out and that dense quilting really helps it. So that's why we decided to go with the two layers, did that early on and she's always just loved it and um, it's been really cool. But you could definitely experiment with different kinds um, of different kinds of batting to stack on top of each other. I, so do I know if the fabric is pre-washed? Do I have any trouble getting the chalk out? I don't think the fabric is pre-washed. It didn't seem like it, but you'd have to ask Tula because she pieced that. And I didn't have any trouble getting that out. So I like the Mark Be Gone Water Soluble Marker. It is the same brand, same kind I have used since I started machine quilting or long arm quilting 18 years ago. Same thing, because I know it always comes out. Never had trouble with it. And I know there's new fun things on the market and I love the Frixon pins and all the other stuff, but. I'm just gonna stick with the one I know is gonna come out. I, I don't need any surprises with that, so I have not had any trouble getting that out. You definitely wanna check though, if you're trying a new product, um, check it on an inconspicuous area first. How do I design, uh, decide which design to use on a quilt? Oh, that's a tough one. That's such a broad question. Um, well, for, for this particular quilt, when she left it for me, I text her, I'm like, hey, what are you thinking? What do you, she always gives me a direction. She doesn't tell me exactly what to do. Um, she'll say, oh, I think we should highlight this or we should, you know, downplay that. And so this one, she goes, well, I like feathers, you know, and I'm like, well, let's just do that. And so I use the inspiration of the quilt for design ideas. Sometimes it's the pattern and I want to add echo lines around it. Um, so it's, it's not always the same reasoning, but ultimately I'm trying to pick one of my, one of the most important things about the quilt and showing it off with the quilting. And so going about it that way. I will tell you though, the more you do it, the more you machine quilt, or the more you pick out designs, the more you learn what you like and what you don't like and what works and what doesn't work. One of the biggest blessings was when I started long arm quilting for customers, I didn't have to piece the quilt. I didn't have to bind the quilt. Well, I did sometimes. I didn't want to bind the quilt, um, but I got to quilt a lot of quilts. And so I learned, I learned, and I'm still learning what looks good and what doesn't, or what can be improved and tweaked. So don't feel like you have to wait until you have that one grand idea just get started and the more you do it, the easier it'll get. And there's still quilts that stump me for sure. I, I walk by it, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. But eventually you get started and, and you get through it. Is there any of any hope for uh, those of us that use a domestic machine? Good news, there is hope. There is definitely hope. You could do that on a sewing machine. And even the idea of breaking the design up into chunks, um, I wouldn't necessarily do a quilt that large with two layers of batting, but maybe you go with a wool batting that has a little bit more loft and gives you that look. And you're just gonna focus on the individual sections. I mean, you're just like I do on a long arm. Long arm, I look at it, I'm looking at this section right here. On a sewing machine, I'm looking at this section. And even though there's more around the quilt or on a long arm, there's all this hanging here, I'm just focused on where I'm at. Um, and again, on either machine, it's, it's do difficult stuff in one or two areas of the quilt and then do easier stuff in the rest. Don't make it so stressful that you're doing like crazy stuff over the whole quilt and just really burning yourself out and getting frustrated. Now, I should pause and say, don't do anything that I suggest and enter a quilt show and expect to win a ribbon. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about quilting your quilts and getting to use and enjoy them. So there definitely is hope and you should check out my free motion challenge quilting alongs. Uh, I do a lot of my tutorials on a sewing machine because I know it's kind of hard to look at somebody long arming and apply it there. Um, definitely, there definitely is hope. Okay, what's the best way for starting and stopping in the middle of the quilt? I'm afraid of my thread coming undone. So. Even on two list quilts, every quilt that I quilt, I do not bury my threads. I don't leave my long tails and tie it and use my needle to bury it into the quilt. That takes too long and is pretty much my version of hell. So I'm not doing that. I just take a couple stitches in place and then trim the threads or the tails off even with the quilt. And I think I'll show this maybe next week or something so we can see how that goes. But here's a couple things. First of all, I always try to do it in a seam or a busier fabric so it's not obvious. 
And then I try to avoid starting and stopping as much as possible. So even though you're looking at that quilt, there were a lot of starts and stops. I do try to quilt the biggest chunk possible before I have to break thread. But what do you do if you're afraid of the thread coming undone? Like, oh my gosh, what if I quilt it and it just unravels? Now, I'm only the expert in my opinion, so keep this in mind, but I, I have done a lot of quilts. I, I don't think it's gonna come undone. If you've ever taken out quilting, if you've ever unquilted a quilt, you know that stuff does not just come out. Two seconds to put it in, 20 minutes to take it out is pretty much the ratio. Every stitch is almost like a knot where it's being joined together. So I feel like the few stitches at the front really help secure it. However, maybe you are doing a lot of starts and stops. Maybe you're worried that it is gonna unravel. Putting a dot of fray check or fabric glue right on that start and stop will help secure it and help keep it from unraveling even more. Um, but I've not ever had any trouble or heard anything about any quilting coming out. And this is how I've handled it the whole time I've quilted quilts. So hopefully that makes you a little less unafraid, unafraid. And if you need a little bit more you know, um, assurance, go ahead and quilt a quilt without bearing your threads and then, and then take the quilting out and see how hard it is to take out. <laughs> um, so great questions. I'm so glad that you could type in what I'm talking about real time and so I can answer those specifically. There was a quick question that came in um, on the type chat. I get on there before, about half an hour before we go live and, and interact on there. And Robert had a great question. On a red and white quilt, would I use red thread or white thread? Um, and the answer is, it depends. I gotta laugh because that's my answer to everything when it comes to quilting. There's no right or wrong answer. So you have to know that. Um, they said it's small triangles, two in, or smaller triangles. So if I'm faced with two threads, I'm gonna pick the lighter of the two. So if you give me red and white, I'm probably gonna, most cases, pick white. But it also depends how much is the ratio even. Is it 50-50? Is my favorite thing on that quilt the red part or the white part, right? I don't want the quilting to take away from my favorite part. Um, but I would say you could actually pick something that's not red or white. I probably would go with a light yellow or a light gray or a light tan. I know that sounds crazy, like, oh my gosh. It's a neutral color that is a little bit darker, just a bit darker than the white, so that it's not gonna be so dark against the light, but it's a little bit darker than white, so it's not so stark against the red. So sometimes your answer is not gonna be obvious. You can definitely use some different colors, or even a light pink thread would work too. So that's kind of the things I think about. And Tammy Hendrickson, who does have my maiden name, um, so she mentioned on the chat that uh, she wants to live chat about thread color, picking thread colors, so I'll definitely do that. I'll show you a little bit about how I pick thread colors and show you examples of how it actually turned out because you'll be surprised how, how often you, the color I pick is not what you would think. All right, so I know that was a lot of talking. We went a little bit long today, but hopefully you have enjoyed it, learning a little bit more about the quilts and, and working with Tula and a little peek into that process. If you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comments below because I get on here from time to time and, and answer them. Love to see what you think about the videos. And if you like them, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other quilters find them. Don't forget about the True Colors deal, the Fat Quarter Bundle. And I'll be back next week with another live chat. Until then, everybody, stay safe and have a great, great week.